Hello and welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event tonight and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Karis and I will be serving as your facilitator. And so before we get started, I have just a few quick housekeeping items. The first one you've probably already noticed, your camera and microphone are off. So the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the many different sessions happening tonight. So be sure that you have checked that schedule out on the website so you don't miss out on any. And then finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Texas. That wraps up all of my announcements. And so I will go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter in university for the night, which is Eckerd College. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Brandon Oliver and I'm an admissions counselor from Eckerd College. Right now I'm outdoors. So hopefully the surrounding environment will cooperate with me. But again, if you need, have any questions afterward, just get in contact with me. And so to start off, Eckerd is a small private liberal arts school in St. Petersburg, Florida. It truly is a stunning location and the campus itself does a really beautiful job of interweaving the natural environment with the campus and the buildings. And so, uh, yeah, we're a small school. On average, we have about 19 students per class, and um, we have about a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. And right off the bat, we like to look at where a lot of our students are coming from. So Eckerd is quite unique in the fact that about 80% or over 80% of our students are actually coming from outside of Florida. So on average, students will travel around 250 miles to go off and study um, at whatever college they attend. But Eckerd students will travel over a thousand miles to get here. So, you know, Eckerd students do tend to be a bit more on the adventurous side, really looking to get outside of their comfort zone to really learn what it is they're passionate about or discover what that is once they get here. And um, another thing I'll say about that is it really does create a nice sense of community with everyone being from other places. S students really do put in a lot of effort to really get to know one another. Another thing that's a bit unique about us is that we have a 414 academic calendar. So instead of just a general, uh, you know, every semester based system, Ecker students will have a little bit more structure to what they're taking every year. So for fall term, students will take four courses and then they'll take one course for winter term and then four courses again for spring term. And so that's what the 414 is. And this allows for a bit more structure and also flexibility when it comes to obtaining internships and even going on study abroad opportunities. Uh, something that we do a little bit different just for first year students, though, is autumn term. So for your first year, we'll kind of take that 414 and flip it. So you'll have a 144. So prior to getting into fall term, only first year students will come to campus for what's called autumn term. And this is kind of like an extended orientation type process. It'll give you time to get on campus, really meet everybody else, and really learn about all the different resources, offices, and departments that are available to you as a student. Also during this time, you'll take an academic course, which is you know, not your general education courses. Sometimes it's along the lines of your major, what you're wanting to study. Other times it can be something that's completely uh, an elective. So yeah, autumn term is a really great opportunity for students to really get adjusted and to get comfortable with campus. And so this is a snapshot of what um, some of our areas of studies and majors are. Um, our most popular being marine science, um, in addition to animal studies and environmental studies, but we do have a ton of different programs and options for students. Uh, so no matter what you're interested in, there are a ton of great programs that students can go into here. And, you know, campus does have an amazing location. Not only do we like to utilize the beach, you don't even have to go far from your rest halls to get some of the nicest beaches, whitest sands, and clearest waters in all of the US. But we're also quite pet friendly. So as you can see in this picture, the little dog in the back, uh, not only do we allow small dogs and cats, but also some more exotic animals such as heg hedgehogs, iguanas, and even snakes. So if you are an animal or pet lover, you know, Edgar may be a great place for you. In addition to the recreational purposes of our waterfront, um, the waterfront also serves a few other purposes, one of which being a service purpose. So if you are interested in um, getting involved with the Coast Guard, we have one of the nation's only maritime search and rescue teams. So uh, we have this program called XR, and it's for students who want to volunteer and actually respond to emergencies in the Tampa Bay area. It's a really cool program. You don't have to have any prior experience to join. 
Um, and yeah, you'll get trained and again, work with the Coast Guard. Uh, another purpose is for academics. So especially if you are interested in the marine science, the environmental studies courses, uh, we definitely utilize the campus as a laboratory. So for some of those courses, you'll get on vessels, go out and collect samples, bring them back to the labs and conduct research. Uh, yeah, right here at Eckerd. And then again, you know, there are a ton of recreational opportunities. Students can run out sailboats, kayaks, uh, a ton of different water sports equipment that they can take advantage of right here. And lastly, if you would like to apply, you can uh, apply through the Common App or from Eckert's application from our website. You just have to submit the app, uh, your high school transcripts, and at least one, or one letter of recommendation. Uh, we are test optional. So if you are a senior or junior, we are not requiring you to submit your test scores. However, if you do, we will include it as a part of your evaluation. And uh, we do have what's called early action. So if you apply by November 15th, you're guaranteed your decision by December 15th. However, we do have rolling admission. So even if you can't meet that deadline, we'll continue to review applications for it, as long as we have spots open. And lastly, Eckerd is a part of the colleges that change lives. So if you're a student who does like a hands-on learning environment, smaller class sizes, uh, you know, you may benefit from going to a college that changed lives or a group of 40 schools that have a bit of an innovative and progressive approach to higher education. So yeah, this may be a great resource for you along uh, yeah, your college search journey. And again, my name is Brandon Oliver. And if you have any other questions, just reach out to me. I work with Texas students and um, yeah, I'd be happy to correspond with y'all in the future. Thank you. We will keep things going. Our next institution is Florida Memorial University. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Nick Romarco. I'm actually the Assistant Director of Admissions at Florida Memorial University, um, the only HBCU in South Florida um, in Miami. So uh, we are located in Miami, Florida. Uh, as I mentioned, we're the only HBCU in South Florida. So if you want to come down to Miami and you're interested in being part of the HBCU community, um, we are the only one located down there. Um, we do have a small campus. Our entire enrollment for the year is roughly 950 to 960 students. Uh, we do that intentionally. We like to keep our classroom sizes small. We like to keep our community small. That way, all of our students get a chance to know each other, get to know their professors. We're never going to put you in an auditorium lecture hall style classroom of 120 to 150 students where you're just sitting listening to a professor lecture all day. Uh, we believe in experiential education. We believe that small, intimate classrooms are the best way for students to learn. Um, I teach one of our freshman classes, which is one of our bigger classes on campus. And uh, my classroom is about 25 to 27 students. So we keep everything small. We keep everything in house. You can walk the entire campus in about 20 minutes and you can walk from the furthest point on campus to the other furthest point on campus in about seven to eight minutes. We were founded in 1879 um, in Live Oak, Florida. Through the years we moved to St. Augustine, to Jacksonville and we landed in Miami in 1968. We've been in the same location ever since. Um, in 2010, we had a $5 million arena built for our basketball team and volleyball teams. Um, we've also had plenty of uh, famous notable visitors, including President Obama and Vice President Harris. In addition to those speakers, we have uh, some notable alums, maybe people you've never heard of, but people that are notable in their fields. Um, in the middle, that's Mr. Barrington Irving. He was the youngest and the first black person to fly by himself around the globe. Um, he was part of our aviation program. Um, we had the first and second um, women, African-American women to receive a PhD in radiochemistry. And then Sabrina Fulton, who is Trayvon Martin's mother, is an alum from 1997. So the Trayvon Martin Foundation is located on our campus. Um, and during the summer, his summer camp, the foundation summer camp is run out of our, our university. Um, we're a huge international campus. About 20% of our students are international, mostly coming from islands like Jamaica, Bahamas, um, Barbados. Um, we also have students from Germany, from Spain, from Honduras, the Czech Republic, Africa. So we really do get students from all over the world to come to our campus, not just for athletics, but for academics. <clears throat> and we're located in Miami. So um, Eckerd College, beautiful campus. We also have a beautiful campus. We're both located by the beach. Um, so we're on Miami Beach. We're about 20 minutes from there. Um, we're close to Wynwood. We're close to Brickell, a lot of very popular area for um, high school and college students. 
a lot of big attractions, Jazz in the Gardens, Rolling Loud, the Kyocho Festival. Every weekend, there's something to do for you to enjoy your time, whether it's the beach, um, food, art, museums, music, sports. We have the big four, Heat, Dolphins, Marlins, and Panthers. We also have Inter-Miami CF as a soccer team. <clears throat> On campus, we have 13 varsity sports. That includes basketball, baseball, football, soccer, track, and field. Uh, we also have women's flag football. We have women's softball. We have women's indoor volleyball and women's beach volleyball. So we're the only HBCU with a beach volleyball program. Um, our volleyball team won the conference championship two years ago. Coach went outside, um, had the girls play outdoors for the first time, and won the conference championship the following year. Um, we also have a marching band that was ranked number two in Division II by ESPN in a recent article. They've only been around for two years, and yet they're ranked number two nationally for all Division II schools. Um, clubs and orgs, sororities, fraternities, um, events on campus weekly. 30 different majors, some of the bigger ones. As I mentioned, we have an aviation program, so we're, park, uh, we're located next to Opelok Airport, which is where our, our Cessna plane is parked. So if you're interested in becoming a pilot or flying, we do own our own plane, so it is cheaper to fly with us as opposed to other universities that have to rent a plane. Um, we have your typical science programs, biology, chemistry, earth science, health science. Um, we have social sciences, criminal justice, psychology, um, computer science, IT. Um, our performing arts program is geared more towards music. And then we have our business programs and our college of education. There are some scholarships available. So if you have above a 4.0 GPA, you, um, you're, you can apply for our presidential honor scholarship. We give three of those away a year to students that have 4.0s and we pay the entire cost of everything for the school. That's your tuition, your fees, your room and board, our academic excellence scholarship. If you have a 3.5 or higher, um, you qualify for that. We give 20 of those away a year and that covers your tuition. For our academic achievement, if you have a 3.25 or higher, we give away 15 of those a year and that covers half your tuition. Plus we accept all forms of financial aid and scholarships. And finally, applying to FMU. We are test optional. We've always been test optional. So we don't look at SAT or ACT scores for you to get admitted. All we need is your high school transcript and your application. If you have above a 2.0 GPA, you automatically qualify for acceptance and we'll release your decision within three days. We release these decisions every Tuesday and Thursday. We do it via email. So we're affiliated with the Common App, the Common Black College App, and you can also apply on our website. Like I said, we don't make you do essays or test optional, none of that stuff. All you gotta do is submit your high school transcript and complete your application. If you want to apply, that's the QR code right there. It'll take you straight to our website for you to create an account. If you'd also like to visit campus, we are open for visits Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., and then once a month on Saturdays. Starting in January, we'll have our open houses and our accepted student programs, so you can be part of more of an in-depth program than just a campus tour. So like I mentioned, we are available for campus visits if you'd like to come see our campus, um, and that's the link to apply. If you have any questions, I will be here. I will answer any questions in the chat and I'll leave my contact information. So I'm gonna turn it back to the next school now. Thank you. Next up, we have Kaiser University. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Hall. I'm an admissions counselor here at Kaiser University, the flagship campus. So just to tell you a little bit about Kaiser, um, so Kaiser is a private not-for-profit institution here at our flagship campus. We are located on 100 acres, 10 minutes from the beach, but in a really serene um, environment here on our campus. So we have a lot going on. We have 29 different clubs and sports. So there's definitely a lot of activities, a lot of student life events going on. And um, we had three national champions this year. Um, and we also won the Learfield Directors Cup um, for the whole um, country. Um, something that's really awesome too is that we do have those small class sizes as well. So we have that 15 um, to one student to faculty ratio. Um, and something that's really unique about our flagship campus specifically is that we do have students from all across the, the globe and all across the country. So we have a really diverse student population and you'll be meeting people um, from everywhere. Um, we do have um, a really phenomenal nursing program. We are the number one producer of nursing grads in the state of Florida. And we also have a pheno um, phenomenal placement rate for our, um, our KU grads. So um, that placement rate is at that 91% as well. 
So as you can see, I'm not going to go ahead and play the video, but I just wanted to show you guys a snapshot of what you can see is a really good aerial shot of campus. So um, right there is our main lake and across that bridge to your right um, is where all of your classes will be held. So um, that thing that kind of looks like a rocket ship over there, that's our bell tower. Um, so just so you can kind of get a snapshot of campus, but um, that's uh, something that you will always be walking across as a student. All right, just to kind of go over the admissions criteria with you guys. So if you guys want to go ahead and take out your phones, you can go ahead and scan that QR code right there. So we do require a, a minimum of a 2.7 high school GPA, um, an SAT of an 830 or an ACT of 17. Um, for some of our programs, we do require um, a testing assessment. Um, those programs include um, nursing, applied engineering, um, and also biomedical science. Uh, so if you do um, want to do one of those programs, we do have different requirements, but our general requirements, you do need to have at least a minimum of a 2.7 high school GPA. Um, so once you go ahead and submit your application, we can definitely go through those next steps with you. Um, if you want to go ahead and um, ask any questions, you can go ahead and do that now as well. Um, some of our programs, to name a few that we do have here at the flagship campus, um, our really popular ones include biomedical science. Um, we have the pre-med track and also an equine studies track. Um, so definitely if you like to ride horses or you want to do that pre-veterinarian um, you know, track, that is definitely an option for you. Something that we have really awesome here at the flagship campus is our College of Golf. So if you are a golf fanatic um, and you want to make a career out of either playing, um, playing golf or, um, you know, running um, a golf course, we do have a golf management associates and bachelor's degree. Um, and we do have um, a phenomenal nursing program as well. Um, so this is just some of our programs, just to name a few. And something that's really awesome is that we do have social media on all platforms. So if you ever wanted to be kind of a fly on the wall here at um, our campus, I would definitely recommend that you check out our social media. It is Kaiser U flagship. Um, and that would definitely give you guys an inside look on what it would be like to be a student here. You can check out all of our phenomenal student life events that we have going on on campus, um, as well as all of those great championships that I was talking about. So here is my contact information for you guys up here. Um, again, you can go ahead and scan that QR code. Feel free to text, um, call, or email me. Um, we do have um, a phenomenal open house that is actually going to be happening this Saturday. Um, you can follow us on Instagram, Kaiser U Flagship. Um, and we are going to be having it through Instagram Live. So if you wanted to come check out campus um, and see you know, what Kaiser University, our flagship campus is all about, definitely make sure to hop on there. And um, again, I will be sticking around for any questions. So let me know if you guys have any. Next up, we're gonna have Lynn University. All right, thank you so much. My name is Freddie. I work over at Lynn University. I'm one of the admission counselors. I'm excited to tell you about my alma mater. One of the great things about Lynn is that Lynn University is built around Boca Raton and not vice versa. So because of our location, we actually travel to 99% of the world. With the huge migration that happened from California and Texas, we are expected to become the cryptocurrency capital of the world. And in fact, our dean for the College of Business, who used to be the creative director for Univision is starting a cryptocurrency museum right on our campus as we speak. We're fortunate that we were just ranked as the number one most diverse campus in the nation and number one for most international students. So this is not a suitcase community. On the contrary, only 20% of our students are from Florida. So during the weekends, it is a unique opportunity to be on campus to say the least. This is one of the aspects that we have at Lynn. As you can see, we're a global community. What I really wanna focus on is how Lynn University combated COVID-19. We've actually been on campus since last August and we developed a brand new block schedule. So you will only be taking one course every four weeks, Monday through Thursday for two and a half hours per day. Fridays are reserved for guest speakers and internships that could be, that could be solving uh, crime scene investigations on campus, well, mock crime scenes. That could be seeing Stephen A. Smith or Fidel Castro's granddaughter speak on campus. For a small school, we do those big things that make a huge difference. 
at Lynn, all of our students do receive an iPad Pro. Please don't come to Lynn just because you're going to get an iPad Pro. Come because of the ecosystem. All the faculty members have written their own iBooks. So let's say you're, let's say you have dyslexia. You can highlight the passage. It's going to read it back to you. If you have ADD or ADHD, you can highlight the passage and it's actually going to make it into a note section. Just because you're in a classroom for two and a half hours per day, the world doesn't stop. So as you get notifications on your phone and on your tablet, so will our faculty members. So you might be taking a course, for example, from Oedipus to Oprah, and something may happen in global society, and the faculty member may adjust it. One of the things we actually adjusted is when the Texas abortion bill started um, conveying, our faculty members changed their course, and they spoke about that. So be prepared because our curriculum is industry design. We have six different colleges. If you want to fly the world, we do have a College of Aeronautics. We are a thousand hour ATP school. Our College of Business and Management is for that creative thinker. Our students created something called Habit Toothpaste. It's going to revolutionize the toothpaste industry. In the morning to help you wake up, it has caffeine. At night, it has melatonin to help you go to bed. Our own faculty members actually invested in that, in that business. Our College of Arts and Sciences has a unique partnership with the Washington Internship Institute program. So you can actually go to Washington DC for a full semester. Our College of Communication and Design, our students actually worked on Marvel's Endgame. And one of our students was hired by Blizzard Entertainment, which is a company that created Call of Duty. We have a College of Education. As substitute teachers, you will be teaching from your first semester at Lynn and our, and our Conservatory of Music full tuition scholarship if offered admission. So 45 majors, but as you can see, all majors have unique resources behind it. We do have a three-year degree program that is available for all our programs except our BFAs, which means you can actually graduate Lynn in three years instead of four, and we will pay 10 courses for you to finish early. Many of our students will stay their fourth year to get their master's program. Not a bad deal. Uh, four years, two degrees for not even the price of one. We have a unique core curriculum. Number one, two, and three are focused on the stereotypical English courses, but the Lin way now. So you might have unique English courses like Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones, From Oedipus to Oprah, From Eve to Evita. My favorite one is the history of the New York Yankees and how it impacted American capitalism. And then the two courses our faculty members created, because again, we're industry design, Black Lives Matter, does anti-Semitism and racism exist in the United States? If so, how do we fix it? And as I mentioned, the Texas abortion bill. Quantitative reasoning, we will teach you financial literacy. We will teach you how to manage a checkbook, mortgage house, finance a car, interest rates, so much more. My favorite course, Investments 101. Every day you have to present why you bought a stock, why you sold it, or why you kept it. You will have a better sense of why you do what you do. Scientific literacy, not my forte, but I love that they talk about global warming, sustainable efforts, and climate change. Now, the key thing with us is schools should not be measured on acceptance rates. This is what they should be measured on, career placement rate, first floor of our new student center, all you can eat, cafeteria 24-7, third floor. We actually have the largest social impact lab in the United States. So come make a difference at the university. As I mentioned, you can be a big fish in a small pond instead of a needle in a haystack. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to answering your questions. Perfect. We will keep things going with the Catholic University of America. Perfect. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone and thank you all for taking some time out of your evening. My name is Kevin Medina. I am one of the assistant deans of undergraduate admission here at Catholic University, right in our nation's capital in Washington, DC. And we like to think of this as, as really the first step of you writing your story. So a little bit about Catholic U by the numbers. We are a smaller community. We have about 3,100 undergraduate students. About 80% of our students do identify as Catholic. That being said, you do not have to be Catholic whatsoever to attend the university. We are welcoming of all faiths, backgrounds, races, ethnicities with students from all 50 states in the United States and about 33 different countries spanning the entire globe. We were actually founded as a research institution and Catholic University is the second oldest research institution in the United States. And as I mentioned earlier, we do try and keep everything relatively small. 
with an average class size of 19 students. And while our classes may be small, um, we have a very vast and widespread campus sitting on 176 acres of self-contained land in Washington, D.C., making us the largest self-contained and the greenest campus in the city. And living in the nation's capital is definitely one of the biggest benefits of attending Catholic University. Uh, we are the only university as well that actually has a dedicated metro stop right on our campus. The way that I typically describe it to students is that we are a metropolitan campus, but only when they want it to be. You really do get the best of both worlds with a very traditional college campus environment, but you are just three to four metro stops away from downtown for your internships, the events that are going on, Smithsonian's monuments, um, so you have that fast paced city lifestyle every day, every weekend, if you want, but our students really find it refreshing that they don't have to be surrounded by it 24 seven, and they always have a quiet campus to come back to. And your time at Catholic isn't just spent within the classroom. Um, we are a very, very active campus, just like um, DC itself is. So about 30% of our students are NCAA Division III athletes with 25 NCAA Division III athletic teams. We also do have 100, uh, over 100 different clubs and organizations. And we say, if we don't have it, start it. It is extremely easy to start a club organization. And typically in any given week, we have about 40 to 50 events, including our service opportunities just right on our campus. Every single student at Catholic is going to have a minimum of two advisors as well. These advisors are going to be helping you both academically and professional in development. Uh, we like to say that Washington, D.C. is run by interns. So you really can't walk outside of your dorm without getting hit with some sort of opportunity. About 90% of our students are employed or serving um, or going to graduate school within six months of graduating Catholic University. And here's a list of just a few of the opportunities that our students worked on last year. Uh, but we do have over 3,000 internships within just our network alone. And here you can see our, uh, our nine schools of study at the undergraduate level. Um, making up these schools is over 79 different undergraduate degree programs, so definitely a little bit something for everyone. Some of our most popular programs are going to be our politics majors, which is our largest overall major, for obvious reasons, being in Washington, D.C., our architecture students who do get their own studio space from day one, um, our Bush School of Business, um, which is our newest renovated building, the School for Music, Drama, and Art. We are the only music, drama, and art school in Washington, D.C., and our School of Nursing. Um, our students for nursing typically complete about 650 to 700 hours of clinical experience. Um, and upon graduating, they take the license and a license exam for nursing. Last year, our students passed at 100% pass rate on their first attempt. All of our programs are direct entry as well. So there's no separate application for any of our programs that does include engineering and nursing. And so looking at the application review process, we're going to be looking at your GPA on an unweighted scale, strength of curriculum, what types of courses you took. And one thing that does make our application review process a, a bit more unique is that we are test blind. We do not look at any student's test scores whatsoever for any part of the application review process, as well as the scholarship review process. So you do not have to worry about sending in your SAT or ACT test scores. Again, we will not be looking at them whatsoever. In addition to the academic criteria, we will also be looking at your activities, service, leadership, basically everything outside the classroom, and you will automatically be considered for our university honors program. There's no separate application for that. Our next application deadline is November 1st, and then we also do have a application, um, a regular decision application January 15th. For the regular decision, you are still eligible for all of our programs and all of our scholarships. And speaking of scholarships, our scholarships do work in a similar way that our honors programs work. Um, there's no separate application, so you are automatically going to be considered for all of our scholarships. Um, here you can see a few of them. So our merit scholarships range from 15,000 to 32,000. We do have a parish and a legacy grant for those students who are a part of a Catholic parish or have had a parent, grandparent, or sibling graduate from the university. We do have a few full tuition scholarships for our highest achieving students. And as I'd mentioned, um, there is no separate application um, to be considered for any of our scholarships. And finally, just wrapping up, um, just what are some next steps? Um, we are still doing high school visits as well as interviews for those of you who are seniors. Definitely follow us on our social media, CUA Admission. Instagram definitely tends to be the most popular where we're doing um, live takeovers and um, highlighting what our current students are doing. 
and then look out for our virtual events as well as our campus visits. We are currently open Monday through Saturday every single week um, hosting visits on campus. So if you happen to be in Washington, DC, definitely pay us a visit. And I will pass it along um, to our next presenter. Thank you all again for taking some time out of your evening. All right, and we've got one more presenter with us tonight and that is gonna be the University of Connecticut. All right, hello everybody. Just pulling up my presentation. So here we go. Um, before we get started, my name is Alexandra and I am the Texas Admissions Officer. So if you ever have any questions about UConn, you can come right to me, I'll be your point person. I graduated from UConn myself back in 2018 and now I work over in admissions. So to get started, we are located in a town called Stores, Connecticut. We have our very own zip codes. When you come to Stores, everything there is UConn. We are just an hour and a half from Boston and two and a half hours from New York City. There are buses that stop right on campus and go to both cities every single week. So you can go explore whenever you want to. You can see that there are four other campuses listed on this map and those are our regional campuses. Typically our in-state students will go to one of those and then transfer up to stores. So when you're thinking of UConn, you are thinking of that store's main campus. And that's what the focus of this presentation is going to be on. We have 19,000 undergraduates on our main campus with a student to faculty ratio of 16 to one. Our average class size is 40 students, but you will have some lecture halls with 200 to 300 students that gets broken down into a smaller discussion section later on in the week. Those discussion sections are usually around 30 to 35 students. So that's where the smaller class size average comes into play. As you get more specific into your major, the class sizes get much smaller. I had a communications class where one of, it was 19 students and we just sat around a table and chat, chatted the whole time. We do have over 115 majors and here is a list of most of our majors and some of our minors. We have our College of Agricultural Health and Natural Sciences, which houses our animal science and dietetics and nutritional sciences and exercise science program. We have business and engineering. We have our School of Education and School of Fine Arts. We've got social work, nursing, pharmacy, um, even an entire college of liberal arts and sciences that has all of the natural sciences, social sciences, languages, anything that you can think of most likely falls under that category. If you're looking at this list and don't see a major you're interested in, we do have our individualized major program, which is basically create your own major. So you get to pick and choose which classes make up your own major. We also have our undecided program. So you can come in undecided and work with an advisor for your first two years to help you figure out what, what you wanna major in. And by the end of your sophomore year, you'll declare your major. We have 21 division one sports teams at UConn and all students get free admission to every single sporting event. So if you wanna to go to the basketball games, the hockey games, soccer, football, you name it, you just swipe your ID and walk right in. If you're an athlete yourself, but you don't want to compete at that division one level, we do have 37 club sports teams where they have auditions, uh, I'm sorry, tryouts and practices and they travel and play against other schools. So you can um, still get that competitive edge. We have over 135 study abroad experiences. We have a lot of the traditional experiences where you just go and study at another university, but we also have other ones that incorporate internships and research abroad. So if you are looking to get to another country and explore and see what else is out there, we definitely have a program for you no matter what your major is. We also have over 700 clubs and organizations on campus. We have some fun ones like our skydiving club. So if there's any daredevils out there, you can try skydiving. We have marching band, we have dance uh, organizations, we have sororities and fraternities. Um, you could even be the mascot and wear the husky suit and run around at all of the sporting events cheering on the crowd. So um, there's something for everybody and you absolutely will not be bored at UConn. Here are some of our favorite traditions. You can see right in the middle, there is that girl covered in mud head to toe. And that is at Oozball, which is our mud volleyball tournament that happens once a year. You get a group of your friends, you go play volleyball in the mud and you get covered everywhere. Um, it's one of the most fun you'll have and it's definitely on every UConn student's bucket list. We also have our one ton Sunday event where they fill up a boat of ice cream and you get a bucket and you can fill it up with as much ice cream as you want and it's totally free. So who doesn't love free ice cream? 
This is Khalid. He was the headliner at our Uconic Music Festival. We've also had Trevor Noah and Pete Davidson do comedy shows. We've had Brad Paisley come for a concert. Um, Laverne Cox and John Quinones have done lecture series. And all of these events are free with the exception of Khalid where tickets started at $10. So um, there's always some sort of show or performance or something going on that you can go check out. We have 99 different housing options on campus and all first year students are required to live on campus. After that, it's up to you but you will have housing for four years if you do want it. Freshmen will live in a traditional double, so that's you, a roommate, and a communal bathroom down the hall. But after that, you can pick if you wanna be in a single, a triple, a suite style, or an on-campus apartment. All students who live on campus are required to have a meal plan, and all meal plans have unlimited access to every single dining hall. We have eight different dining halls, and they all have their own themes. One has uh, a lot of international foods. Another has home style cooking. So there's always like mashed potatoes and mac and cheese. Um, another is farm fresh and every single one has vegan, vegetarian and gluten-free options. So if you have a restricted diet, don't worry. We review holistically, which means we look at everything. We are test optional for this year and next year. So feel free to apply and take that, um, to use that to your advantage. We'll look at everything on your application, your essay, your activities, your letters of recommendation, your classes, everything that's on there we use to review. Here are our, our dates and deadlines. We automatically review all applicants for scholarships and honors. Um, we have a scholarship for out-of-state students that ranges from 10,000 up to $25,000 a year. So if you get that $25,000 scholarship, it really cuts it um, almost in half. Here is my contact information. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for joining us today and go Huskies. Perfect. Well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We do have just a couple of minutes. And so I'm going to keep things rolling with a brief Q&A. And so if our, all of our panelists wanna go ahead, turn that camera back on, turn that video back on. I will get us started with our first question of the night, which is, what is one thing you want students to remember about your school? All right, so I'll say one thing to remember. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to just one thing, but I would say that, again, if you're looking for a place where you can find a great sense of community, Eckerd is a great spot for that. Again, most of our students are coming from fur further away. Um, over 80% are from outside of Florida. So when students do get down here, they really do invest in making connections in one another, with one another. And um, yeah, really finding that sense of community and family-like um, atmosphere here. Awesome, and for me, I would say um, our tagline, um, we learn where you vacation. Um, a lot of people love paying big money to come down to Miami and spend weekends and spend weeks and vacations and holidays down here. And you can live here for four years and be close to all of that stuff uh, while you learn. So. I'm not a lot of people know where Florida Memorial is, but we're located down in Miami. So what I would want to say about Kaiser University, our flagship campus, is that you are not just a number. Um, all of the faculty, staff, and administration here um, are here for you and to help you. So, you know, our motto is we always put our students first. Um, and so, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, we are going to be your biggest advocates to help you be successful in your future career. At Lynn, I would say that the most important aspect is we don't have a status quo. We're not a one size fits all. Everybody has their own voice and opinion and really having the foundation of social impact. Imagine a little small school in Boca Raton, Florida, every single year has a cohort that creates about 50 to 100 nonprofits. So if you're looking to make a change in society, we can be the right fit for you. So I mentioned it during, uh, um, during my presentation, but Again, Catholic University is a metropolitan campus, but only when you want it to be. You really do get the best of both worlds of having a traditional college campus, but also being right in the nation's capital. And we always like to say, um, if you're in Washington, D.C. long enough, um, you'll meet whoever you want to meet. And I would say that UConn is full of options. Um, we have tons of majors, tons of clubs. Um, tons of different things to do. But not only that, we also have the best ice cream in the world, if you ask me. We make our very own ice cream on campus. It's called our dairy bar. So when you first drive into campus, you'll see rolling hills and cows exploring the, the fields. Um, and we use their milk to make our own ice cream. So you'll have to come up and try it and let me know what you think. All right, and my final question for you all 
is what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? All right, so I would say one myth would be that, um, again, kind of like another rep said, that you are just a number when you um, are attending their college. But also I feel like whenever you're looking into the uh, your colleges and the applications, you're not just a number, you know, definitely utilize us, get to know your admissions counselors, we're here to help you. And that's our primary purpose. Right. The myth I'd like to debunk is that um, we're kind of like the used car salesman that we're trying to sell you on coming to our school. And that's not the case at all. We're providing information for you to make the best decision for you, an informed decision for yourself and an educated decision. We don't want to sell you on coming to our school and feed you misinformation and misrepresent our schools. We want you to make the best decision for you. We're just offering you um, what we think is our best foot forward and hoping that you follow. If it's not for you, it's not for you, but we're not trying to sell you. We're just trying to educate you. Yes, I'd like to also add, um, definitely ask as many questions as you can think of. Don't hesitate, don't hold back. Um, knowledge is power. So any questions that you have whatsoever, don't hesitate to ask your admissions um, counselor, or officer, that's what they're there for. The biggest myth I hear on a consistent basis is that acceptance rates matter. They don't matter. Two important statistics for you to know, the national average is 66% of students are offered admission into colleges and over 80% of colleges will accept over half the students that apply. There's 4,000 schools in the United States. You're gonna find your fit. The fit is not always that school that only has a 5% acceptance rate. So acceptance rates don't matter. It's the community, it's the culture, and it's the career placement. Um, not necessarily a myth, but one thing that I always encourage students is, um, especially at the beginning stages, don't let the sticker price um, stop you from applying to a university. Um, you know, as we all mentioned here today, there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars in scholarships. Um, and, you know, the college process can be an affordable one if, if you work through it in the proper way. But don't let that initial sticker price stop you from applying to, um, you know, you're a great school that you are really interested in and could be the perfect fit for you. And I would just like to say that um, a lot of people think that it's just your GPA or just your test scores that are going to get you into college, and that is absolutely not the case. Um, I know at UConn, we read every single application front to back, um, so every single student is getting read at least twice. So just know that someone is out there reading your story, so put some time into your essays, put some time into your application to really make sure it reflects who you are, because it's not just your GPA that's going to get you into college. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a quick five question survey and we would appreciate any feedback you can provide about your experience tonight. I would also encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions because we do have some more still going on. Finally, you'll be able to find not only this session's recordings but also all of the other recordings at strivescan.com slash Texas. Thanks so much and have a great night. Bye-bye.